Hello and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 9th of October 2020 and the time has just gone 12.42 British Summer Time. And I'm looking ahead to next week, which is Monday the 12th until Friday the 16th of October. And before we take a look at the charts and what's going on uh, in terms of the big events next week, uh, let's take a quick recap of the big events of this week. Um, right now we're seeing broadly speaking, between European and US equity markets uh, are in fairly decent condition. Um, what, there's a lot of uh, hope out there in relation to uh, the Democrats and the Republicans striking some sort of stimulus package in relation, um, to, the, in relation to a fiscal response to the COVID-19 crisis. Although there is, you know, both sides are still politically you know, reasonably far apart. Um, it can, you know, could be a case of that traders are maybe get, getting a bit ahead of themselves. Um, but it seems like President Trump wants to kind of do individual um, stimulus packages in relation to the airline sector or maybe doling out um, $1,200 checks uh, to US citizens. Nancy Pelosi of the Democrats is more keen to do a kind of a one size, kind of one grand uh, package rather than bits and pieces. But, you know, um, uh, Nancy Pelosi also said, you know, she's, you know, somewhat kind of hopeful that some sort of an agreement can be reached. And with that, we've seen a decent enough move in stocks the last few days. This year is the FTSE 100. Um, you know, the bad news is the FTSE 100 has been kind of moving to the downside the last few sessions. So it's been underperforming in relation to some of its, uh, say the likes of the DAX and the S&P, which we'll look at in a, in a moment. Um, on the flip side of things, we can see that on the, the last few sessions, as I just men mentioned, sentiment has increased in relation to the hopes uh, of a COVID-19 um, kind of coronavirus stimulus package from the US. We can see that, that markets, that the, the FTSE has been pushing higher. Um, we've actually, we're comfortable, you know, we're back above the kind of psychologically important 6,000 mark. The last few sessions, the market's been moving higher. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the 100 day moving average, which comes to play at 6,096, or it may be up towards the region of the mid September high in it, um, 6,126. Uh, conversely, if you have a decent move to the downside and we can continue in the broader, wider downtrend, uh, we could be looking at testing the lows. Of, of the kind of you know early October in around 5,883, and if you move below that, we could head back down towards kind of 5,800, 5,767. Notice how there's been on a few occasions this zone here acted nicely as support, so that, that, that area seems to be fairly significant in terms of support. Any break below that uh, could, could point to further losses, could take us back down towards 5,660. Um, take a look what's going on over in Germany. So even though health, the one of the kind of other topics of the day is that we, sadly we are seeing a pretty f high increase in the rate of co new COVID-19 cases. Uh, the World, Organi World Health Organization uh, recently said we've had you know a, a surge in cases, um, a fresh record uh, highs in terms of daily increases, but that really really hasn't shaken uh, European markets. As we can see here. Um, the DAX has been in a nice upward trend uh, the last few months. Granted, we had a fairly decent um, correction into late September, but since then we've been pushing higher. So we've had the higher high into late September, the higher low into early October, and we're pressing on higher again. So it's comfortably above its 50 day moving average. If you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at going up towards 13,200 uh, or maybe up towards the mid-September high in around 13,339. Beyond that, good tickets could be looking at retesting the September high. And of course, the, the high in September was the highest level it's it, 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 um, the highest level it's been at since uh, since since um, since February. Uh, on the flip side, if we do have a fairly decent move to the downside, we could see support come into play from this yellow line here, 200 day moving average. Well, just below that metric on a few occasions acted as support. So that area of say down to 12,684 or down to kind of 12,600 itself, that area could act as support should we move lower. I'll take a look now what's going on over in Germany, after Germany on the US on the S&P 500. As I mentioned, the FTSE was, is underperforming um, these, major, these, these major markets. We've seen, um, the FTSE broadly moved lower the last few months. The DAX has been in pretty good shape. But if you take a look at the S&P 500, uh, an all-time high in September, 
Granted, I had a very decent correction. You have the lower low, the lower high, the lower low. But notice how it got at the it acted it, got, it received support from the one hundred moving average here, um, and it's been pushing higher since. And in fact, you know we're set when the cash trading gets underway, we're looking to open at levels last seen uh, in early September. So things are looking quite positive on the S and P five hundred. While we hold above this blue metric, the fifty moving average, it's likely we could see further gains. If we press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting five thousand sorry three thousand five hundred. If we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the September highs, which were all-time highs. Um, if we do have a decent move to the downside and we take out the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, we could be looking heading back down toward this area here in around 3,300. And if we have a decent move below that, we could be taking it, retesting the lows uh, in late September. Taking a look now at what's going on in relation to the currency markets. The pound is going to be in focus next week. Um, we haven't seen, we've heard a lot of talk from the UK and the EU in relation to um, the trade deal negotiations. We haven't had a huge amount of action. The language tends to be similar. Both sides are keen to get a deal. Both sides are willing to walk away if there's not a good deal on the table. Um, there has been some progress made, um, but it appears that for, for the time being, fishing appears to be one of the more important issues. Um, not that long ago, Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, stated that if a de if an agree if, if a kind of the bones of an agreement aren't put in place by the 15th of October, which falls in, which is like next week, next Thursday, um, if it's not, it isn't in place by then, the UK team is going to walk away from the negotiating table. That could be a negotiating ploy, maybe it, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but nonetheless, Euro sterling, which we're now looking at here, is likely to be in focus. And if you can see, the trend for the last few months has been at the upside, particularly uh, in early September, so a decent move to the upside. Since then, market Euro sterling has come back quite a bit. It's been trading in a smallish range the last few sessions, but if you can hold above this blue line, the 50-day moving average, uh, which comes into play at a zero spot 90.59, if you can hold above that, I think you know it's, it's likely that the wider uptrend could continue. And if we press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this area here in a zero spot 91.57, and a decent break below that, above that, could put us on track for the late September highs. And if you take out that, we could then be looking ahead up to the mid-September highs in a zero spot 92.91. Um, if you do have, if you do move below the 50 day moving average, we could be looking heading back down towards the 90 zone. And if you head below that, we could then be looking heading back down towards the lows of early September in a zero spot 88.64. While we're on the topic of euro sterling, we'll also take a look at what's going on with the pound versus the US dollar, because uh, we've got a couple of, you got the likes of US. Uh, retail sales and also US inflation numbers out next week. So we could see some volatility in the pound and uh, the dollar as well. Um, so the pound dollar hit a nine month high or nearly a nine month high in September. But since then, um, we, we've seen a move to the downside. So we have the lower low, the lower, the lower high, the lower low. But in the last few sessions, we have been pushing higher again. So we haven't retested this blue line, the 50 moving average. Notice how it acted as resistance in mid September. We are pushing higher, but we haven't gotten up to that metric uh, as of yet. So are we going to be at the point where we run into resistance at that metric and turn lower again? Or are we going to be at the point where on this occasion, we have a meaningful kind of break above it and then we press on higher from here. So if you do take out this blue line, the 50 moving average in at one spot, 30.27, we could be looking at heading back up towards this area here in our kind of 132, one spot, 32.69. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the highs of September. Of early September, a move to the downside um, could take us back down towards the kind of 128 area. And if we go below that, we could be looking heading down toward this zone, uh, the lows of mid to late September in around one spot 26.75. And notice on a few occasions, this kind of general area acts as support. So a move below that could be quite significant. And that could take us back down to the lows in mid July in, in around one spot 24.80. Um, in relation to the other big, big events of next week, um, U.S. banking season will be will, will, will uh, kick off. Uh, reporting season for U.S. banks: Goldman Sachs, C Citigroup, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley. Uh, we have full year figures from ASOS, the online fashion crowd. Their share price has been in a very uh, positive run uh, in, in the last few uh, weeks and months. Uh, we've seen a decent move to the upside in ASOS. It's not too long ago that the, the stock was uh, racking up all-time highs. Online shopping has become very popular in the last few 
last few months because of the pandemic. Uh, we have third quarter numbers out from Johnson & Johnson. Uh, Apple have a special event next week where there's talk of, uh, of possibly um, an iPhone 12, the iPhone 12 being announced. Uh, Walgreens, Boots Alliance, they, ha they have fourth quarter numbers out. Um, as I mentioned, the EU talks are going to be on the, uh, are going to be in, in focus. Uh, we have U UK unemployment and claim accounts and average earnings. That's going to be, uh, be, be of importance. Uh, as I mentioned, US uh, CPI and retail sales. We have trade numbers out coming from China, so keep an eye for copper and the mining stocks on the back of that. Um, we have third quarter numbers out from Delta Airlines. And also, as, as we do every single week, we have the US jobless claims, which is coming out on the 15th. Uh, that's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.